In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to solve for a particular variable in multivariable equations. We're going to go through three equations progressing from easy to medium to hard. This is an equation, an equation for strain. For strain. Epsilon stands epsilon for strain. Rate. But we're going to solve for length. for length L. Now, one mistake I see people make very often is they want to cancel these. And yes, that would be convenient if we could do that, but we cannot. If you're ever unsure about some canceling operation, sometimes it helps to think about it in terms of just numbers. Suppose instead of L, we had 1. And instead of L0, we had 2. Now, looking at this equation right here, very few people would make the mistake of thinking that the 2s cancel. Instead, it's fairly obvious that we have 1 minus 2 is negative 1 over 2, and epsilon equals negative 1 half, which I think is somewhat meaningless if we're thinking about the physics of strain, but for algebraic purposes, it illustrates my point. So instead, what we need to do here is first eliminate the denominator. And the way we can do that is we can multiply both sides by L0. This is what we'll end up with. I think it's a little bit hard to read this term right here. So I don't know if it helps you put a little multiplication symbol in there. And now we only have one more step remaining. If we add L0 to both sides, we will get L all by itself. So we're just going to add L0 to both sides. And now we've solved for length L. Here is the van der Waals equation, and I'm going to solve for P, which stands for pressure. That means we want P alone on the left side of the equal sign, and all this other stuff needs moved away. This can be overwhelming if we look at all the details, so let's abstract it. I see three big chunks. I see what's in parentheses with the P, I see what's in the set of parentheses next to it, and I see what's on the far side of the equation. So our first task is to move this blue blob over to the other side by dividing both sides by V minus NB. So here's what I end up with. V minus NB is in the denominator, and now I don't even need these parentheses on the left side. Now the only following step that we need to do is move this piece, this term, over to the other side. So I'm just going to subtract it. And now I've solved for P. All right, hard mode. We are going to solve the Arrhenius equation. I am probably mispronouncing that. Here is the equation right here, and we are going to solve for T. Now let's get the easy part out of the way first. K0 is a single variable, or a constant rather. Let's divide both sides by K0. All right, here's what we end up with. E is the mathematical constant, and all of this is the exponent of E. It may be a little bit hard to read, but this is all up in the exponent of E right here. Now, perhaps the hardest part of this is remembering what is the inverse of raising E to a power. And the inverse of that is the natural log. So we take the natural log of both sides of this equation. Now, on the right side, this is very convenient because natural log of E to a power cancels everything out except for that power, that exponent. And this is what we end up with. Now, on the left side, I'm going to apply a logarithm rule to write this as a subtraction of two logarithms rather than the natural log of a fraction. This is somewhat optional. It doesn't necessarily help us solve for t, but I'm going to do it anyway because I think it looks a little bit nicer, and you might disagree with me on that. So applying our logarithm rule gives us these terms on the left side here. And remember, I'm still trying to solve for t. Now, at this point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply both sides by t. It's going to cancel over here, and we'll just have the t in the numerator over on this left side, not forgetting that we would need to add these parentheses if we want to do this properly. And all we need to do now to get t all by itself is divide both sides by this term right here. So we're going to divide both sides by this. Now, it can be easier to multiply by 1 over. So what we're actually going to do is we're going to multiply both sides by 1 over this whole term right there. So 1 over that, we're going to multiply both sides. So this is what it looks like at first. I am going to multiply straight across and combine this into one big fraction. And there we go. This is our final answer right here. 